Good morning. We welcome you to St. Joseph's Episcopal Church, the Church on the Way, with open arms and open hearts. Please be reverent while we worship. We encourage you to fully participate in our service with responses and with song. Please use the chat to add your prayers, thanksgivings, and petitions before the sermon so that we may include them in the service. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to St. Joseph's Episcopal Church, a church on the way. Whatever states of journey you are in, whether you could look at our church as a gas station where you could have the infilling of the Holy Spirit or your permanent home here in Queens Village, New York. Thank you for the voice of the people, Shirley Jones.
Wonderful opening hymn. Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you. Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, church. A reading from Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Psalm 95, verses 1 to 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. 
and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the cavern of the earth and the height of the hill are his also. The sea is his for he made them, made it and his hand have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pastures and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, church. A reading from the Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of all Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the work of his great power. God put this work to work in, in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 46. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and give you food or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw that you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. Let us pray. He is the Lord. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, he is the King. Good morning and welcome to St. Joseph's, the Church on the Way. To those of you on YouTube and Facebook Live, may the Holy Spirit be with you. I hope you all survive the Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving Day, and are eating uh, <laughs> leftover from so many feasts. Today we celebrate uh, the Feast of Christ the King. This observance was instituted in 1925 by Pope Pius the sixth, the eleventh of the Roman Catholic Church, Pope Pius eleven of the Roman Catholic Church, and since then it has been adopted, accepted by the worldwide church, including the worldwide Anglican Communion, and many other churches, including the many mainline Protestant churches. Christ the King Sunday is the final Sunday of our liturgical calendar. This calendar, as you know, is a cycle that begins with Advent, which is next Sunday, and would move on to Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, Pentecost, and finally return to Christ the King. Stephen Covey, in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, wrote that in the cycle of life, it is good to start from the end. 
He explains that to live a highly effective life, you first imagine your funeral. What do people say about you at your funeral? What are the eulogies of your friends and family? What are they saying about your legacy? Do they say you helped make a difference in their life? Do they say you made a world a better place than when you found when you first found it? And once you have made up an imaginary funeral service for you, then you make your way from that future back to the present and then towards the end. A few years ago, I led an Asian American conference in Korea. Around 300 delegates from the United States gathered in Seoul, Korea, under the auspices of the Anglican Church of Korea. As part of their goodwill, the American embassy in Seoul tendered a banquet for us. Uh, the United States ambassador to Korea kept addressing me as Bishop Vergara, and I kept on correcting him until a delegate from a Chinese Episcopalian from San Francisco said to the ambassador, Your Excellency, Father Fred is a bishop of people's hearts. Well, I guess he adopted the words of Princess Diana, who, when interviewed if he desired to wear a crown of the queen, replied that she would rather be queen of people's hearts. Now, I'm not sure that I can be called a bishop of people's hearts. I'm half sure that Princess Diana became the queen of the England people's hearts. But I am absolutely sure that Jesus Christ is the king of people's hearts. He is the king of people's hearts for three reasons. He is a peace king. He is a shepherd king. And he is a servant king. That makes him the king of the people's hearts. What is Jesus like as a peace king. From his birth in a manger up to his death on the cross, Jesus is the king of peace. The prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, Unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He came into this world not to lead an armed forces and conquer territories by force. Now this was the fallacy of some of his own disciples. They expected Jesus to lead an insurrection against the Roman Empire and destroy their enemies after a bloody war. Now, this was also the fallacy of the Christian Crusades in history and of the many so-called holy wars made in the name of Christ. The biblical prophecy about Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords is that he is a peace king. Isaiah 42 says of the gentleness of the Messiah in contrast to the wicked force of the war freak kings. Isaiah wrote, a bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not extinguish, but he will faithfully bring forth justice. The name Jesus reveals the character of this peace king. He is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. He is among us to live with us. He is above us to enlighten us. He is below us to undergird us. He is before us to lead us. He is beside us or behind us to protect us. And he is beside us to comfort us. And he is within us to empower us. The book of Revelation chapter 21 says, And I heard a loud voice from heaven 
saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with his people, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. Kings and rulers are often distinguished apart from the people, but God's peace is with people. This peace king is within us. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. He lives within people's hearts. And when King Jesus lives in your heart, my friends, you will have peace that surpasses human understanding. Second, he is the shepherd king. He is not just the king of people's hearts. As a peace king, he is a shepherd king. Isaiah prophesied, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs close to his heart, and he will gently lead those that have young. King David, the greatest king of Israel, understands what it means to be a shepherd because he was one. He wrote Psalm 23rd and illustrated to us the role of the shepherd. The she shepherd carries a rod and a staff combined. The rod protects the sheep from the wolves and the lions whom he attack the sheep. The staff guides the sheep along the right paths. Now, two years ago, we traveled to Ireland and Scotland. And one of the features of our tour was a seminar on modern sheep raising. We learned that the chief shepherd is the owner of the sheep, but the under shepherds are the sheep dogs that are trained to lead and protect the sheep. These sheep dogs mingles with the sheep so that they could spot the wolves who masquerade as sheep. Now, that's the meaning of the wolves in sheep clothing. The wolves are the worst enemies of the sheep because they crack open the skull of the sheep and swallow up their brains. The other worst predators of the sheep are the eagles. The eagles attack the lambs by eating up their tongues. And so without their tongues, the lambs could not eat and they die of starvation. Now that is why it is important that Jesus becomes our shepherd king. That even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for the Lord is with us. We shall fear no evil to crack our, our, our skull and eat our brain. We shall fear no evil to eat up our tongues, because his rod and his staff, they comfort us. A little girl from Sunday school was asked to recite Psalm 23rd, and she began by saying, The Lord is my shepherd. And she stopped. Everyone thought that she forgot the rest of the lines, so they egged her on and said, Yes, dear, the Lord is your shepherd. What else? Her father, her mother, the teacher, the priest, everyone said, Yes, dear, the Lord is your shepherd. What else? And the little girl replied, The Lord is my shepherd. What else do I want? When King Jesus is your chief shepherd, you found the ultimate king. St. Augustine said, Oh, poor man, if you have God, what haven't you got? And oh, rich man, if you haven't got God, what have you got? When we accept Jesus as king of our lives, he will lead us beside still waters. He will restore our souls and he will renew our spirits. Finally, Jesus, as the king of people's hearts, is not only the peace king, 
the shepherd king, but he is also the servant king. Jesus directly contrasted himself from the rulers of his day, speaking to his apostles who were arguing on who was the greatest. He stooped down, took a basin and a towel, and washed their feet. Then he spoke, whoever must be great among you must be your servant. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Service is the calling card of the servant king. And it is service for those whom society have marginalized and oppressed. The Magnificent of Mother Mary says, He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. And so announcing his mission at the Jewish synagogue, Jesus opened the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and declared, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The kindness of the servant king is our resistance to injustice. The joy of the servant king is our antidote to sorrows and pains. The love of servant king is our resistance to the selfishness and coldness of the human heart. And so on the day of judgment, the righteous will say, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and thirsty, a stranger and naked and in prison and ministered to you? And the servant king will answer, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then the wicked will also say, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to the least of these, my brethren, you did not do it to me. Then the righteous will enter into eternal life, but the wicked into eternal punishment. So the moral vision of Christ the King is that we may enthrone Jesus as the King of our hearts, the King of people's hearts. Let this peace King, the shepherd King, the servant King reign into our hearts for Jesus is the King of people's hearts. For he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, he is the King. Amen. In response, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he's worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before God's presence with a song. Let us pray together saying, we give you thanks, O Lord, and call upon your name. Christ the King, you have been made head over all things for the church. May we worthily live as your body in our world. Work your great power in and through us. We give you thanks, O Lord. And call upon your name. Christ the King, you gather all the nations of the world to yourself. Bless the world's suffering with your everlasting mercy. May the oppressed be fed with your justice. We give you thanks, O Lord. And call upon your name. Christ the King, it is from your hand that all are fed. Inspire righteousness in our people, that the hungry may be fed and the thirsty given clean water to drink. We give you thanks, O Lord. And call upon your name. Christ the King, you care for those in prison. Give us hearts for all those who are incarcerated. Where there is crime and violence in our city, offer your peace. We give you thanks, O Lord. And call upon your name. Christ the King, you are good. We pray you seek the lost, bind up the injured, and strengthen the weak. We give you thanks, O Lord. And call upon your name. Christ the King, your faithfulness endures from age to age. May all your saints at work and at rest know the hope to which you have called us and the richness of your glorious inheritance. We give you thanks, O Lord. And call upon your name. Holy and merciful God, open your ears to our call. Listen to the cries of our hearts. Accept our prayers and answer them according to your good and perfect will. In the name of Jesus, the Lord of glory, we pray. Amen. And we pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Happy third birthday to Ace McKee, who celebrated his birthday on November 15th. God's light shines through your smile and your helpfulness to your parents and brothers. May God continue to protect you and help you grow into a special young man. Birthday blessings from his parents and brothers, Dale Marie and Omari, brothers Noah and Legend, and grandmother Sandra Simpson. A donation was made to the Legacy Fund in his honor. And we say the prayer for our birthday. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for any anniversaries, most gracious God, Look with favor upon these, your servants, as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your grace and blessing, that they may continue to cherish each other and continue to grow in love and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
for those traveling, and many of them are traveling today, especially those returning from Thanksgiving in their homes and uh, home countries. Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find everywhere, preserve those who travel, especially today. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from any danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue to pray for the people of the world recovering from earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, and fire. We pray for Palestine during the pause on the siege of Gaza. We pray for compassion and mercy. We pray for the thousands who have died, for those made homeless, for the thirsty and hungry. We pray for those who mourn and those who have been held hostage. We pray for the voice of God to be heard. We pray for the ongoing war in Ukraine. We pray for the genocides in Congo, Sudan, and Tigray. Oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through your son, Jesus. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lydia Gordon asked us to continue to pray for healing for her sister, Sylvia Thomas J., for God to guide the doctors and staff who care for her. And we ask that you include the following people and families in your daily prayers. Janelle Adams, Keisha Alexander, Daphne Aguero, Michael Languria, Ann Archer, Melissa Arrington Hubbard, Audrey Arthurs, Sonia Barton, Natalie Bridges, Idris Bryan, Allison Brown Cunningham, Rose Carrot, Nisha Sharania, Marina Chester, Dossie Chin, Shade Curtis, Hyacinth Dan, Agatha Dobson, Daisha Dub and family, Peggy Durante, John Ellis, Marshall Ellis, Ruth Irvin, Yolanda Evans Humber, Daniela Folks, Nicola Forbes Martin, Fitzroy Gabadon, Michelle Golfin, Claudette Grant, Leighton Grant, Azaquak Green, Desmond Green, Darrell Holness, James Hunter, Natalie Hunt Laviscount, Edson Jack, Norma Jarrett, Afua Johnson, Harold Jones, Noel Joseph, Julene Carney, Marlon Kerr, Anwar Khan and family, Noel Kong, Charles Kasachevitz, John Lake, Eric Lewis, Anthony Liggins, Marcia London, Natasha Lovejoy, Barbara Llewellyn, Dorothy Malcolm, Sister Sheila Marie, Cesarine McKay, Rosalind Maracu, Freddie Mitchell Jr., Laverne Mitchell, Crystal Nurse, Kathleen Nurse Lewis, Norma and Larry Mays, Daphne Paris and family, Desiree Pierce, Eulily Finn, Greta Piscasio, Verily Powerful, Leonard Richard Sr., Chandra Robinson, Shelley Robinson, Shelley Rutherford, Sheila Sams, Elizabeth Rollins, Doreen Russell Hanna, Joy Sanders, Desmond St. Louis, Gloria Scudder, Rosa Segovia, Orinthia Stewart, Clarence Sims, Patsy Stevenson, Maureen Tai, Peter Tavalachi, Lois Tinsley, George Upshaw, Marilyn Warwell, Ansel Whittle, Beverly Williams, Mary McWilliams, Christopher Wright, Rupert Wright, Pat Winter, and Pat Zephyrine. You may now speak aloud the names of those for whom you would like us to pray. Chris, Chris Corrigan.
Pamela de Longoria. God of all power and wisdom, by the might of your command, drive away from our bodies all sickness and all infirmity. Grant to your servants your healing touch, so that their weaknesses may vanish and their strength renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. In union with blessed Jesus. With the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and for, and for all the blessings of this life, for the redemption run, won for us by your life, death, and resurrection for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, when you are blessed by our ministry, we invite you to donate. To support us, please visit our website at www.stjosephqb.org slash donate or scan this QR code by opening the camera of your cell phone, scanning this image and clicking on the yellow link that pops up. Thank you. Creator God, you made the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. You bless us with your abundant abiding love so that we may be inspired to live generously. From your plentiful gifts, we give you our own first fruits, the gathering of our time, talent, and treasure. May they be a blessing to the world. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Holy, eternal majesty, holy incarnate word, holy abiding spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
this morning's announcements. The Willing Workers for Jesus Soap and Sock Drive has begun. So it starts today, November 26th, and will run until December 17th in support of seniors in nursing homes. Please place pre-packed bags or loose items in a marked receptacle in the back of St. Thomas or at the St. Joseph's Rectory. If you are unable to bring packages to either location, please contact Betty Adamson at 516-476-7111 or Nicola Walker at 516-972-5536 for pickup. And they thank you in advance for your support. But just a reminder, if you are unfamiliar, um, the soap and sock drive, they collect soap, socks, lotions, um, any items, hygiene items like that for seniors in nursing homes. So please do support them. Um, just a reminder that December 2nd at 12 noon is the memorial service for Mr. Errol Byfield. And excuse me, um, that is this Saturday at Daybar Bethlehem Cathedral um, in Queens Village. The service starts at 12 and it is followed by the luncheon, which will launch the Errol Carlton Byfield Memorial Scholarship Foundation. So if you have any questions, please contact Mrs. Norma Byfield. And December 8th is the funeral for Randolph Ellis. Um, the visitation is on Friday, December 8th at 4 p.m. at the Carl C. Burnett Funeral Home in Hempstead, New York. And the funeral service is on Saturday, December 9th at 10 a.m. at the Cathedral of the Incarnation in Garden City, and that will be followed immediately by a committal service at Pine Lawn Memorial Park and Arboretum in Farmingdale. The Rector's Winter Ball is upon us. I am not sure if there are still tickets available, but please do check with um, the Finance Committee to see if there are any more tickets. The honorees are Carol Carrington, Weena Jones, Wyatt Jones Johnson, David Joseph, Nicola Walker, and Eden Brown. On December 9th, we will hold our annual Christmas tree lighting at the rectory from 5 to 7 p.m. You know it's Santa, lots of songs and gifts, and a good time will be had by all, so please um, put that on your calendar. And our Christmas pageant and Christmas Eucharist will be held on Sunday, December 24th. So um, at the 11 a.m. service. And a Kanoina, I'm sorry, Father, I cannot Koinonia. say this word. <laughs> Koinonia. Okay. Thank you. Koinonia meal will be sponsored by Father Fred and for all celebrating birthday, um, December birthdays. If you would like to place someone on the sick list or remove them on the sick, from the sick list, please call the church office or email admin at stjosephqv.org. You can also email me and we will make sure they have been added or removed. And that's the end of the announcements um, for me, Father. 
Yes, just want to thank you, Petra, for our, uh, every Sunday you do a wonderful PowerPoint. Oh. And thank, thank you so much. And also for Shirley Jones, the voice of the people today, and to all the voices of the people that come every Sunday. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Father. Um, I would like to wish everyone a um, wonderful week. Just a reminder that the Republic of Barbados will be celebrating their 67th Independence Day on November 30th. Um, so we will celebrate um, next week, Sunday, but just know that that is coming up. And they will be singing the national anthem of Barbados on Sunday at the church. Yes. So everyone, if you'd like to unmute and greet each other before we sign off. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. This is Silvia from Miami. Thanks Hello. for your prayers. Thank you, Father Fred, for your beautiful, our wonderful sermon. And may God bless all of us and have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you for regards to our people in the sunny uh, Miami over there, <laughs> sunny Florida. Good morning, Father Fred and Mrs. Carrot. Good morning. Good morning. This is Jean, Mrs. Carrot. And good morning to St. Joseph. Yeah. Good morning, St. Joseph from the Harpers. Hi. Have a blessed week, everybody. Thank you, John, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Okay, everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Next and Sunday, bye. Sunday. Next Sunday tomorrow. Uh, next Sunday. <laughs>